everyone, welcome back to Cast Iron Skillet Kitchen. I'm Chef John. I'm Rebecca. Thank you for choosing our channel to either watch our reviews or our cooking. We're excited to share this one with you today. So right, this is our project today. We got our new Monument Grill in. Uh, we want to thank uh, the fine folks over at Monument for sending this for us to review. We're going to show you how to put it together, how it's boxed, and then we'll do some cooks on it. And Rico's here to help me to put it together. So let's get started. So as you can see, we got two tables. These are the burner side plates and uh, the wheels over there with Rebecca. What else is over there? That, that's it. We've got um, that's kind of a drip pan, I guess. We have the smoke box, the little wood chip box. Okay, the wheels, the two burner plates, the, the sear and the burner plate. The that right there in the middle holds the um, Holds the tank in on the bottom, and it slide, it's got a little slider on it. The LED light. Over here, we have the uh, unit itself with everything taken out of it. And then over here, we have the table, the actual cart okay, we got to put together. This piece right first. here, that's the bottom. We're going to go ahead and insert the wheels in. They just snap in. That's the back. All right, the thing has two screws. You just have to loosen them a little bit. You can use either a Phillips or a flathead. I'm using a small drill with a clutch on it so I don't strip anything out. Just adjust the clutch. Or you can use a regular screwdriver. holes here to mount this in these two are sliding lock so we'll get those in first make sure you got your clutch adjusted pro properly and all my grills I've put together you always want to come back at least once during the season and once after and make sure you tighten everything back up okay you want to find your two triangle pieces they go up here in the front. Lower. They'll go up here in the front, one on each side. There's four screws already in there. So you just want to loosen them up. These have a half hole. These have a half hole where you can just slide them into place and tighten them up. All right, you got your door with the magnets on it. The magnets should be down on the bottom. Just slide, there's two little slots right here. You just slide this in here and line your holes up. All right, you got three of these. They're kind of similar. This one has two 90 degree ends. That's what we're gonna use now to put on the front. Right, that, right down here at these vents. Okay, right here. It's got a hole right there. Wait, hold up, see that something goes here. Right. 
you want to find the next bar like like this one with the less amount of angle on the end one angles up one angles down so you're going to have this you got a little hole under here and you're going to put this on top You're going to find a little package that says, mine said 40 on it. It's got a little tap screw with a slight point on it. It comes by itself. That's what you're going to need to finish this off. It's a little bag by itself. A little bag by itself. Mine had 40 on it with the right. recycling. The bar you got here. Make sure the ends are up. He means tabs. Tabs are up. All right. <clears throat> and then we're going to use one of the vents down here to add the other one on. We're going to use the top one. Where these tabs are we set this on there's four of them no need to do a close-up we take four of the screws it tells you which ones to use and you just secure it into place all right there's three big screws here on this side which that'd be your right side you just want to half screw them out this is where we're going to drop one of the side burners on. This burner here has two screws. One on top, one on bottom, and there's one in the back, but there's four holes. So you'll have to get an extra screw and a spacer, and you'll tighten it up completely on the inside here. Can't miss it, it lines up pretty inside dang good. On. Up under the neat, neat there, it's just a really tight spot to get the stuff in, so we really couldn't film it. But uh, just loosen everything up, the screws will go in. It was really easy. Yeah, it was pretty easy once you get right, the next one side on there. just the way we did the other side. It's a it has a little casing out, so you really have to get this casing on there good and tight to fit. All right, we got the side one on, but there's two screws, one up front and one in back you gotta put in with a spacer. When you put that part on, make sure that the notch goes at the 9 o'clock position and the other notch goes at the 6 o'clock position. And the flat end of this Wait, goes... I'm not that, not that far out. Okay. And the flat end of this goes up. You put one screw in on the left. And then that screw goes right in that notch. Behind me. These are the cable ties that you use to secure the loose cables underneath. It's time to put the knob on. Some of those plugs under there was for the LED lighting. Re underneath. Rebecca sliding the tray in. After she moves the wires out of the way a little bit. <laughs> and there's the drip tray for your sear. Yeah, me, Re me and Rebecca putting the thermometer in. Came with that kind of already assembled a little bit. So we're just going to attach it to the sidewall. 
it was up here attached. Cut it loose. There's a little slot for it. And just let me attach it right there. And I'm going to use Rebecca's hand to hold it in place. I'm going to take these little sleeves, slide them in the hole, one on each side. Get the appropriate screw it calls for. me but I'm making a mistake so you don't have to right mm-hmm all right there's one handle all right you got these two little what they call them flexible axis okay it's like it's got a washer made into the middle of it it helps hold your door on you want to sit it right down here in the corner there's also one for the other side there's a little spring-loaded one right up here Sit this one down on there. Manage it. Here we go. First shot. Push this one up. Slide it into place. All right. You want to make sure this is facing towards the back, the open end, so you can slide your tray out. The way this looks is that you got to put this here, line up this little hole, all right, drip pan, it's right in there like that, and then we fit this into the back of the grill. Lay the grates up like this. Oh my gosh, that's the easiest one I've ever seen. Guys came with a nice big smoke box. Those are double A batteries if you need to replace them. Just in case you're not used to batteries and you can't see in there, put the flat side up to the spring up to the spring. That helps hold your this canister. One, the battery it goes into the igniter. Just unscrew it off. Well, I like this is on the outside. A lot of these things you have to climb way up under the back side to get to them. So the springs in the back, put the flat side in. We got to get a propane. All right, this will this will attach. It says on either side. You can do it on the front or the side of the left or right shelf. So we're gonna take a look at this. I think I'd rather have it on the front. That's why I don't need it. First, we're going to light uh, Rebecca's sear over there, so she's going to turn it on to high real slow. And then I'm going to hit the lighter, there it went, right off the bat. 
You'll come to max first, and then as you keep going around, it'll get loose. Right, now we're gonna light the main burners. So we're just gonna light one, close the lid, turn all the other burners on, and they all should light. Correct? Correct. So we're gonna, we're gonna turn the main one on right now. I call this the main one. So we're gonna slowly move it to max. Here we go. We'll close the lid so the gas stays in there. And we'll turn these other ones on to max. And when they light, you'll hear it. It'll do a boom all the way across. Or you all can right, thank y'all for coming. Monument, thank you for this nice grill for us to review. I hope everybody learned something and I know there's a, some more videos out there, maybe something they missed that we showed. And if we didn't show you and, and you need some information, just because we just put it together so we know what went on, what kind of troubles we had. So give us a little shout out and uh, we'll tell you what, what we did to fix those problems. Uh, but other than that, if it wasn't for filming, probably about an hour, and then you know, you, you when you two people, there's husband and wife conferencing on whether one of us is right and one of us is wrong, but one of us has the right answer. Trust me, right? Right. So all right. So thank y'all for coming. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Please subscribe, share, ring that bell, get all notifications. Right. Give us a thumbs up. And leave us some comments down below. Ask all your questions. We'll do our best to answer for you. And, uh, oh, before we go, I wanted to tell you. While she's doing that, both this video will also be on our Good to Know channel, our re big review channel. We always get big reviews on grills. And it'll be on our cooking channel. So I just wanted to read you this really quick. It's a six burner with side burner inside sear burner. Clear view, oven grade, tempered glass solid stainless steel cooking grids, backlit LED control knobs, slide out tank tray which is on the bottom, a smoker box, and a pilotless electronic ignition. It's 36 inches stainless steel Baby firebox. Baby girl, mama's talking. Yes, hush girl. As a stainless steel hood, 634 square inches in the primary cooking area, plus 266 inches on that warming rack and side burner. You've got four locking nylon wheels and it's six by 12,000 BTU burners. And the side burner and sear burner are both 12,000 BTUs. And it's got a removable USB LED light. And I'll tell you something about the wheels. If you look at it online, they look like they're the small wheels. They're not, they're a nice size wheels, right. okay? But if you look at it online and just watching the grill, it looks like they have the little small ones on there. No, these are the bigger, bigger wheels. For those of you who might need to know, if you need to get in touch with them, it's monumentgrills.com or you can email customer service at monumentgrills.com. They also have a toll-free number. Yeah.